Why is it that a man is allowed to have uh, up to four wives, according yes. to the Quran? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, practically, uh, I am. I just have one. I don't know. Ah. Uh, my my father has one. My brother has one. Uh, if you just see uh, the statistics, it's majority of Muslims all over the world. They are all all married to one. Mm -hmm. So practically, it's not practice. But there is this is a law we believe in islam it's for life so sometimes you have some reasons because in islam it's not allowed for a person to have a relation with a woman out of marriage mm. but for some other people who live in uh, outside islam they can practice this mm. uh, sexual relation mm -hmm. whenever they like with whomever they want mm. but just if the two parts accept but in islam this is not allowed so sometimes uh, it happens that men are uh, in number fewer than women and this happened for example in Europe in, in second world war in uh, Germany there were so many people killed men and mm. women were so more than men how to solve this problem in mm. a society mm. so that we keep the chastity and keep women away from prostitution and these things mm. and just to satisfy their needs so you believe this is uh, a, pro a problem solving on behalf of God uh, where people yes. are the population yes. of women is more than men. No, the, men no, no, more. this is one of the reasons. Uh, let me, I hope yeah. just you give, this is one of the reasons, mm -hmm. one of the things that can happen. The second that sometimes women are uh, old and they get like we do or divorced and they don't have a, a husband and you know the need of women, uh, they need a man in their life. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you cannot find for this woman a man who is uh, still young or not married mm. in this case she has children mm. she has children and she is like she's old woman and she needs to feel the warmth of the marital life instead of being every day some different wear. she needs a house this is in islam that the person when it happens that a person uh, gets married to a second w wife mm. he has to provide her with a house he has to provide her financially because it's in Islam it's a responsibility of a man to provide the woman uh, for everything she needs in, uh, in in her life so it's a kind of solving a problem in the society that happens every day we have widows every day we have divorced women every day especially those who are aged and they still cannot live alone so the, in Islam this happens that uh, it's uh, even rewardable that you see why can a, a they woman not live alone I mean because I'm talking now about a woman mm -hmm. who uh, has chosen uh, Islam and who doesn't want to uh, practice any uh, relation, any sexual relation out of Islam. So God created human beings with that nature that they love to satisfy this nature. They love to have some other, the second part of them, mm -hmm. that's men and women. So uh, how to find a solution to this? It mm. comes through marriage in Islam. But I to feel marry. that uh, if you, are, you protect so the rights of women only because uh, the women are uh, so, some kind of your property. How this comes? Because everything I read about women in the Quran is, it's like they are the property of the men. And, like, and that's, that's why you have all these rules about what? Uh, that this is men can have no. four, four wives and, and so on and so on. No, this, is, this is your point. No, no, this is your point. I know some people read the way they like. Mm. Sorry, maybe you read some comments that are against Islam. They mm. describe women. Women in Islam is highly respected. Women in Islam is highly honored. It's true. So it says wives have the same rights as the husbands have on them in accordance with the general known principles. But then they say, of course, men are at, re are at a degree above them in status. Yes, this degree, it means about res the responsibility. Ah. This, if you read the interpretation... So the of men that, have more responsibility. Of course, mm. I tell you in brief, the man when he gets married, he has to pay to mm. the woman a dowry. The, once they get married, the man has to provide for the wife and for the children. Mm. If the woman also has some property that she has inherited from her family, mm. in Islam she has her own property. And here I tell you one thing, in Islam, woman has gi been given the right to have her own property 14 centuries ago. In the uh, developed countries, mm -hmm. now women only in 1860, in yeah. 1860 that women started uh, 
having the right to have their own property. Before that, once the woman gets married, the property moves to her yes. to you, her husband. The second Yes, it's true. You you did great in the Middle Ages, but yes. in the twenty first so, century it's uh, it's like a male gets a double share of of the inheritance over that of a female. Yes. yes, I just finished one point and yeah. then we, so uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, I was talking about the property, so Islam gave women that right. Once she gets married, the man has to provide for her. Her own property is her own. He cannot take it from her. According to Islam, this is her own property. If it happens that there is a divorce occurs between the two spouses, mm -hmm. if it happens a divorce, what happens? The man still has to provide for the woman for a period of time and for her children. Konum í Íslam, þær eru sagðar þurfa að hylja bæði hörund og hár til þess að freista ekki kallmannsins um of. Finnst ykkur þetta að vera, þú veist, svo er á sama tíma erum við með drusluguðunguna hérna sem að reyna að varpa ábyrinn á gerendur en í staðinn fyrir þólendur. En í Íslam þá virðist þetta vera svolítið svona eins og Þessi konin að kenna ef hún freistar karlsins og mikið? Nei, 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 karlinn ber ábyrg á sjálfu sér algjörlega, algjörlega. En hann á líka að klæðast skinsamlega, hann á ekki að vera að bera ofan eða þú veist að sýna eitthvað óþarfa fyrir framan aðra konur. Þetta er ekki bara... Og líka konur ber ábyrg á því að þær eiga ekki að vera horfa um og á kallmenn og sama kallmenn um konu. Þetta gildir það sama. Þetta snýst bara um virðingu fyrir sjálfu sér í raunni. Þetta er alltaf þessi stjórnar hvernig... Virðingu fyrir sjálfu sér, virðingu fyrir hjónabandi annara. Og þú veist að vera líka bara kannski að heyra ekkert að frista sjálfsins og mikið með því að vera að horfa á einhver aðra. Þetta er ekki það að við byrjum ábyrð á því að við byrjum að frista einhver að kalla eða eitthvað svoleiðis. Þetta snýst ekkert um það. Það er bara búið að snúa út um þegar alltaf. En hvað finnst ykkur um konur sem að ganga um í mjög flegnu eða jafnvel bara á bikininu einu saman? Þetta er þeirra ákvörðun. En af hverju þarf alltaf að stjórna í hvernig konan klæðist? Af hverju maður ekki bara að horfa á hann og segja ok, hún stjórna því sjálf hvernig hún klæðist? Af hverju þarf alltaf að stjórna og af hverju þarf alltaf að vera karlsinsvar? Í rauninni kemur þetta karlinum bara ekkert við hvernig konan klæðist sig, hvort hún sé með slæðu eða ekki. Þetta kemur honum bara ekkert við og að hann er að pína konan að gera það, að setja þetta upp, ef hún villa ekki, er ekki tilbúin til þess í hjartanu, þá er það bara mjög slæmt fyrir hann trúalega séð. Það á ekki að tróða því upp á konan sína hvernig hún klæði sig. Hún getur líka verið, ég nota ekki slæðina dagstæðlega en ég klæði mig, ég er ekki með fleginn niður á, ég veit ekki hvað og ég klæði mig samt, þú veist, þó ég sé ekki með slæðina, ég er alltaf með þau til um það. En ég finnst þetta líka spurning um af hverju konan er að gera þetta, er hún að gangi bikinni, er þessar að reyna að gangi augun á kallmennum til að fá atikli eitthvað svona, er hún að gera þetta bara út því hann er heitt og hann er langa til þess að gera það, mér finnst þetta að vera spurning sko, því að ég finnst rosalega mikið um það að konur í dag sé að klæða sig fyrir kallmenn. En er það ekki samt þá þeirra val og frelsi til þess að heilla kallmennum? En ég meina þá finnst mér líka að það er að Það eru sem sagt ekki að vera að dæma mig þá fyrir að klæða mig eins og ég er. Nei, alls ekki. Ég klæði mig svona dagstæðlega. Já, ég er alveg sammála því. Ég meina, af hverju þarf alltaf að vera að... Og ekki vera kúða þér til þess að gera það. Ég meina, ef að þeim langa til þess að gera það, ok, en ekki vera kúða þér til þess að gera það. En er konan ekki skörið lærir en karlmaðurinn í Íslam? Það sem að, en er ekki sagt í kóranun um að... að Adam komi og undan konunni? Hún er alveg að jafna og stöðu. Og það kemur mjög vel fram í koranum að konan er jafnmanninum. Og ég til dæmis er sagt, við erum paradís. Við erum paradís. En svo er líka paradís er við fótskur móður. Hvað segir það? Já. Konan er upphefð rosalega í koraninum og allstæðar í Islam og sérstaklega móðurinn. Já, finnið þið þá fyrir miklum miskilingi og fordómum í garð múslima á Íslandi? Já, já. Rosalega mikill miskilingur. Ég held þetta sé bara það að það er Þetta er svo nýtt á Íslandi og fólk bara veit ekki betur, það er bara, það er verður að hafa, þú veist, það veit bara það sem það sér í fréttunum og fréttirnar eru yfirleitt neikvæðar, þannig að þú veist, það er bara veit ekki betur og það er bara að kynna þeim þetta. Það er alltaf verið stjórnað hvernig konan klæðist, alltaf, og það er rosalega í mig. Konan á að fá ákveða sjálf hvernig klæðist, það er bara þannig. Finnst þér í íslensku samfélagi að konur séu... Það var alltaf verið stjórn Varst þú að stöttu pilsi þegar hann fór? Af hverju varstu klæk svona? Þú varst bara að bjóða upp á þetta. Þetta er ekkert betra. Nei. Þetta finnst mér bara, já. Ég er mikill feministi, sko. En af hverju dýlur þú ert sammála því að konur eiga að fá að vera stöttum pilsi með að vilja það? 
ég er ekkert endilega sammanlega, ég er bara með fyrst að ræða að fá að ráða því. Það er ekkert mitt að stjórna því hvernig það er klæða sig. Íslenska hefðir, þetta er ekkert frábrugðið Íslam í rauninni, þetta er náttúrulega bara... Flestar íslenska stelpur sem var gert húsnum var í fyrsta. Það er það og þetta er sko, arabísku konur, þetta er með þeim ákveðnustu og sterkustu konum sem að ég er bara að sé. Og séð, en það sjáði að það er þessar frammakonur, arabísku frammakonur, það er bara ótrúlega. Það er ótrúlega, það er mikið feminista félaga í Marokko til dæmis og í Egyptalandi og þetta er skarfandi og sátt í Arabíu. Tell me, in the court of law, a woman testimony counts half of a man's testimony. Why is that? Yeah, so this is not right, the information you have. This is, has in Islam... You need to have four women against one man or something like that? No, no. In Saudi Arabia? No, 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 that's not true. It, it, it's only in some cases, uh, some cases we have women the same like men. Mm. If they get uh, see something, they want to be witnesses over it, they are the same as men. Some other cases, small cases, when it has, that has to do with some financial issues, like referred to in some uh, texts, it says that they are like the men, like uh, the two women is... Uh, it's one man. It's one man. This is some, not all, cases for women are like two no. men. No, it says in, in the Quran, yes. and let two men from among you bear witness to all such doc documents. Uh, yes. But if two, two men be not available, there should be one man and two women to bear witness, so that if one of the women forgets anything, the yes. other may remind her. So the answer comes here. Yeah, so, so that if one... So you, you don't trust the woman to remember? No, I trust... No, this is your, what you say. Mm. We trust women. We, uh, we, we respect women so much and mm. the thing here it's answered in the Quran that the women sometimes they have some conditions uh, 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 in their life that makes them mm -hmm. like out of the mood out of the natural mood in their life you, you understand me mm. that sometimes women have like uh, the period and this thing this makes them mm. change the, their temper changes so here if they, uh, like, the, it not, doesn't happen even from all of them, but it sometimes happens from some. Mm. So in this case, that they remind each other, they just remind each other, as God said yeah. here in the Quran, that in case <clears throat> one of them forgets. So forgetting is something uh, oh. natural. The other reminds here. But, but the men don't no need to have other guys to, to remind them. Yes, there are already two witnesses. It says here in the Quran that a husband may hit their wives even uh, if the husbands merely fear that they are uh, arrogant or in their, uh, they, they can hit them. What's the translation? Uh, you, you talk about the translation. If, that if you fear high-handedness from your wives, remind them of the teaching of God. Then ignore them when you get, go to bed, <coughs> then hit them. If they obey you, you have no right to act against them. God is most high and great. Yeah. This is from the Quran, Surah. So, yes, so this is a translation of the Quran. Yes, of this course. This is the word, yes. So, yeah. I uh, do not speak Arabic. Yes, you don't speak Arabic. So, no. so, so when, when we understand the text, we should always... Uh, I'm just talking with you and... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some words in Arabic that needs to be well translated according to the meaning. Mm. According to the meaning. Uh, the meaning is shown in the Prophet's practice. Because the Prophet, God said in the Quran, the Prophet yeah. is your role model, mm -hmm. that you should follow him. So in the practice of the life, the, in the, li the Prophet's uh, uh, lifetime, all his, uh, uh, the way he, he treated his wives, uh, this is our uh, example. Uh, did, did the Prophet never hit his wives? Never, never mention. Are you sure? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. He even treated them so kindly that they all loved him. So one time also it's mentioned in the history that the Prophet, there were some Bedouins who come and they like uh, have some kind of dancing with uh, spears, the uh, mm. kind that men used to do. And Aisha loved to do so. So the Prophet helped him and he even had her on his shoulders, like, uh, like carrying her mm -hmm. and helping her to see from beyond uh, some, some, some wall. Mm -hmm. And he, he used to say to her after a long time waiting, is that enough? You finished? He said, not yet. And he has been waiting. This is referred to about how he used to treat yeah. his uh, but wife. But you, you, so you, you talk about this as, as it's a very noble thing to do. That 
but this is what every man does for his love. And okay, I mean, it's now. You talk about it's, it's especially noble of the prophet not to uh, noble. treat their wives. Not noble. Now you are saying that you are asking me, do you, are you sure the prophet did not mm. do, uh, did not beat? I say never, he never beat his wife. He used to treat them so kindly. Mm. And I'm just giving an example and much more in the history of the Prophet peace be upon him. You see how he used to treat his wives so kindly mm. and he is our teacher. The Prophet peace be upon him said, the best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are the best in treatment to their wives. Ahmed Sadirk, thank you very much for talking to us. It's thank a you. pleasure. Thank you. It's a pleasure to me.